Alright guys, so in this video I'm going to be introducing the practical assignment for this unit. Um, and then each week we're going to be adding more and more onto this and then in the final week, being week 5 for AutoCAD, you're going to actually finish this up on your own and turn it in for a grade. Alright, but um, this week it's basically just going to be stuff related to the lecture so we're going to be using some of the drawing tools and modified tools to start drawing in the walls, okay? And um, hopefully this gives you a little bit better of an understanding of those tools because we're going to be using them in more of a practical application, something that you will actually be doing on the job, um, and we're going to be drawing a real floor plan, okay? So to start out, you want to open up AutoCAD, and then you want to go over here to where it says Start Drawing and hit the flyout. And we're going to choose a drawing template. And if you remember from week one, the drawing templates are used to um, have a set of pre-made things built into it for our use. So that way we're not going back and doing a bunch of things from scratch. Okay, so for instance, the units are going to be set up correctly. Um, the layers might be set up for us somewhat. And then also the the paper space and uh, title blocks and things like that will be set up for us too. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and choose this option here that says tutorial slash iArc.dwt. Uh, if you also have that same one, go ahead and click on it. If not, it's not a big deal because um, I'm going to show you how you can set up your drawing to sort of be the same way. Um, but if you have this, go ahead and click on tutorial slash iArc.dwt. Um, now when that loads up, it opens up into paper space as a D size layout. So we're on this tab right now in paper space. We're going to go ahead and just click on model to switch back to our regular model space view. Okay, I'm going to turn on my grid. And now the next thing that we're going to do is check our units, okay? So units are something that I'll probably get into later on a little bit more, but basically we want to make sure that whenever we start a new drawing, our units are set up correctly, and by units I mean are we using architectural units like feet and inches, or are we using decimal units, are we using metric units? It's really important because you know, sometimes when you start drawing, you may not realize, but you might be in the wrong unit setup, and that can mess a lot of things up, okay? So, very first thing when you start a new file from scratch is to type in units and hit enter. And what you're looking for is this right here. So, where it says length, you want to make sure it says architectural. A lot of the times, whenever you just use a default template, it'll start you out in decimal. And you don't want that because it really messes things up. So click on architectural and then precision at 1 16th of an inch is fine. We're just going to accept everything else as default and click on OK. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a command called xref. That's X R E F. And that's used to bring in outside files into our drawing to help us with the drawing process. Um, so if I type in X, R, E, F, and hit enter, we're gonna get this dialog box that pops up here. All right, so the next step is bringing in an image file that we're gonna use to help us out with our drawing. Um, this file, I have it uploaded to the, the Blackboard folder, okay? Um, it's the, the bathroom layout file, and you're gonna see it on there but you're gonna go ahead and download that and then save it on your computer somewhere so you can find it easily. And that's what we're gonna bring into our, our model here. All right, so you wanna go up here where it says attach DWG and click on the flyout. And we're gonna be attaching an image file, okay? Um, when you're working in an office, you'll, you'll probably use the xref command to attach DWG files a lot. It's very common. Um, whenever you're working on construction document sets to bring other drawing files into another drawing file. Um, and also, attached PDF is commonly used too, but in this case we're going to click on attach image. 
All right, and then we're going to navigate to where we have saved our file. So right here, this is the file you're looking for, the week two bathroom plan. Go ahead and click on that and then click on open. Um, and then leave everything as the default option and click on OK. All right, so if you look on my screen, you can see where it says um, specify insertion point. So go ahead and just click somewhere relatively close to the origin. It doesn't really matter. And now it's asking us for a scale. Just go ahead and click on enter. And then this will be the default scale that it'll load in as. Okay, I'm going to close out of the XREF dialog box because we don't really need that right now. And then the next thing we need to do looking at this floor plan is we need to scale it up so that it's at an accurate true scale. All right, so if you remember back from the lecture for this week, I mentioned that later on I was going to be talking about scale by reference and why it's useful. Um, this is a perfect example of why you want to use scale by reference. Whenever you have sort of like a, a background image or something that you're going to be referencing, it's really, really handy being able to use that scale by reference option to get it at the perfect size, okay? Um, and you're going to see just in a minute why that is so useful. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is make this a little bit easier for me to work with. So I'm going to click on my drawing or my, uh, my image file here. And I'm going to change this fade value up here in the corner. I'm going to set that to something like 75% If you want more, if you want less, it's totally fine, whatever works for you. But 75% I'm going to start out with. All right. And then once that's done, I'm just going to click on Escape. Okay. Now we need to scale the plan so that it is a true scale based on what we're seeing here on the dimensions. Okay. And we can choose any one of these dimensions to scale by. It doesn't really matter as long as... Um, we do this process correctly. Okay, so when I want to scale something to be the correct size, um, well, I'll show you that in a minute, but first I'll show you what I mean by it's the wrong scale. So if I go here to my measure tool and then I click on two points um, roughly where they're supposed to be, this isn't going to be super, ac super accurate because it's just an image that we're looking at. There's nothing that I'm snapping to, but if I click roughly here in the middle of this uh, cross and then I go over here to the other side of the dimension and click again. Looking down here you can see that's roughly two inches when in reality that's supposed to be five feet. Okay so you can see what I mean by the scale comes in and it's off. We want this to scale and measure exactly five feet just like it's shown in the drawing. Alright so to do that what I do is I start out by drawing a line. So I'm going to click on the line tool. And I'm going to go to that same point, get it, zoom in really close and get it really accurate, really close to where that um, reference line would be. So somewhere right in here. I'm going to click once. I'm going to drag to the right and I'm going to type in five feet and hit enter. Okay. And then if I click escape to cancel out of the command. So this is actually what five feet looks like, okay? Um, in comparison to what we're seeing with our drawing. So you can see that this is way out of scale and it needs to be scaled up to uh, be an actual five feet, all right? So the next step is to click on our image, type in scale, okay? And then we're gonna specify our base point. So our base point is gonna be this point on the line right here, okay? Next, what we want to do is choose reference down here in the command line, or you can just hit R and hit enter and that'll do the same thing, but I'm going to click on reference. Now we want to click on our base point again. So at the start of the line that we drew, and then the second point we want to click is right here, roughly where this five foot line ends, okay? So where this five foot dimension ends, roughly right here, we're gonna click again. And now we're gonna drag this point until we hit our end point on our line that we drew. And then that's gonna be our final click. So now you can see when it scales it, 
this line that we drew is exactly the, the correct distance um, for that dimension. All right, now I'm going to show you uh, how effective that is at scaling accurately. Okay, so if I were to go up here and draw a line in line with this one starting here, and then draw that 13 feet 4 inches and hit enter, you can see that's ending almost right on the money at the end of that dimension right there. So it's not perfect. Nothing's ever going to be perfect with these image files that we're bringing in, but that is pretty close and that's going to work really well just for a reference, okay? All right, so now that we know we have it at the right scale, what we want to do is take this image and we want to move it uh, to a good point on our drawing space, okay? So I like to align things based on uh, maybe a left-hand corner point. So um, somewhere down in here, I want to find a point and I want to put that right on the origin. So let's go ahead and choose this point right here. So what I'm going to do is select this and type in move and hit enter. And now I'm going to choose this corner point as accurately as I can. And once I've chosen that, I'm going to click on my snap mode down here so that I can snap this exactly to a precise point on my grid. Okay, so I'm going to turn that on, zoom in really close, and I want to snap it right to the origin. Okay, so you might have to zoom in really close to get it, but if I go right over the origin and then click again, now this is snapped right to the origin right where I want it. All right. Um, after you've done that, go ahead and turn the snap mode back off because it's kind of annoying. That's something that you, you want to use intermittently when you really need to be precise. precise. But um, other times, just keep it off by default. All right. So now that we have this, basically what we want to do for this week is start by drawing in our walls. Um, in an accurate way so that next week we can go in and start adding some of the stuff inside of the bathroom into the drawing. All right, but this week we're just going to worry about these perimeter walls and uh, you know maybe the wall right here but that's all we're really doing and then we'll probably draw in the opening for this door as well. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do right now is start by using my polyline tool And I'm going to start drawing. I'm going to pick a point to start drawing um, at my origin. So I'm going to turn my snap mode back on so I can snap to my origin right on that line. And then I'm going to drag this up. Turn that back off. I'm going to drag this up and I'm going to find a point relatively close to where this dimension, this five and a half. Uh, inch dimension is starting. All right, so somewhere right about here is good. And I'm going to click. All right. So after that, I basically want to go in and start typing in these dimensions. Um, just keep on going with this line segment, but type in the dimensions that I'm seeing. All right, so my next dimension, I'm just going to type in. I want to make sure my cursor is, you know, pointing upward here, but I want to go to my keyboard now and type in. 5.5 inches. Okay, so five and a half, five point five. That's gonna bring me up to here, and you can see that lines up pretty well. And then my next point, we're gonna follow this dimension here. So 10 foot eight inches. And then hit enter. And that's gonna end us right here on that. Okay. Um now, we don't know the thickness of this wall, but we can get a pretty good idea of what it's supposed to be just by looking at that dimension next to my cursor. So you can see where it says polar, I can see roughly how many inches it is. Um, so that looks to be, let's see, about three and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in 3.5 inches and hit enter. 
All right, so that takes me right to the top of this. Now, we can assume that this five and a half inch dimension for the wall thickness is the same wall thickness that is shown for this wall too. So for that one, I'm going to type in 5.5. All right, and that gets me right where I need to be on my 13 foot four inch dimension. Okay, so then that dimension right there is going to be 13 feet, four inches, enter. That takes me right here. And then this one, we're gonna do another three and a half inches, okay? Just like the other wall, or this wall right here. So uh, 3.5 inches, enter. And now we're right here on the outside edge of that wall, okay? Now, for this dimension, again, we don't have an exact dimension of how long this wall is. So this one, we're going to, again, um, get that pretty close, and we'll be able to get a good idea of how far it is. So if I'm looking here at the dimension that I'm getting next to my cursor, we're getting about 14 feet 9 inches, so that's what I'm going to go with. So 14 feet 9 inches, enter. That takes us right there. Um, again, here, we don't have an exact dimension, so we're going to check, and we're getting close to 5 foot 5 and a half inches, okay? So 5 feet, 5.5 5 inches, enter. Um, coming up here, you can see that we have this dimension here, but that's dimensioning from the inside face of this wall to the um, inside face of this wall here. So since I know this is supposed to be five and a half inches is my wall thickness, I'm gonna type in five and a half inches, okay? And then I'm going to do that three foot, four inch dimension to get me inside of here. Now, we're going to have to do some work and offset this to get it back out here because right now we just want to worry about the outside boundary of our walls, but we'll fix that later. So I'm going to type in 3 feet 4 inches to get me to that inside dimension. And now we're going to drag our cursor back and we're going to... I'm actually just going to take this and extend it all the way through to make sure that it's perfectly straight. Um, while you're doing this, make sure you have the ortho mode turned on because it's going to make your life a little bit easier. Um, if you have your O snaps turned on, you want to set up the perpendicular snap, okay? So with the perpendicular snap on, you're looking for this right angle and you're looking for it to say perpendicular. When you see that, you can click and you can know that you're exactly snapped at a 90 degree angle and you're hitting that line exactly. Uh, precision inside of AutoCAD drawings is key, and you want to make sure that your intersections are really clean and accurate, okay? But once you do that, go ahead and just click Enter to exit out of the polyline command, and this is what we're going to end up having. All right, um, so the next thing that we're going to do here, since I started my drawing down here, and then I, I uh, started my 5.5 inch dimension here, you can see that we have a vertex when I highlight this. There's this blue grip point that um, I can actually snap to. All right, so if I start a line command and I hover over that intersection point right there, I can now draw this line in to the right and I can end it at that perpendicular intersection and just click Enter, okay? So the next thing we're going to be doing is um, using our trim command to get rid of this segment right here and also this because we actually don't want this. We don't want this piece and we don't want this piece. We just want sort of um, this line going around here without these two wall segments hanging off, okay? So I'm going to use trim and then I'm going to highlight all of this as my fence and I'm going to get rid of 
this segment and this segment and then hit escape you're gonna see that I can't trim off this piece here and that's because it's not actually crossing through it through anything we just need to hit escape click on that line segment and then delete it okay um, but now we have what we're looking for we basically just wanted the outside perimeter of these walls okay and uh, now I'm going to explode this and the reason we're exploding is because we have different uh, we have different wall thicknesses here like we have the three and a half inch and we have the five inch and so if I were to uh, join all this together and offset um, you know not all the walls are going to be a totally accurate thickness then so I'm going to highlight this and then type explode all right so that way I get my individual wall segments okay um, so at these corners here if you did this the exact same way I did, you're going to have these two little segments here. Um, and you're also going to have a little segment right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight all those little segments and delete them. Now keep in mind the best way to do this is by making the blue selection region. So that's starting at the top left, clicking once and moving to the right and clicking again. And that isolates just those segments that we want. So I'm going to highlight and click on these and delete highlight and click on these and delete. Um, if you did it a different way, you might not have those segments, but um, we just if we do have segments like that, we just want to delete them and make sure that our drawing is as clean as possible. Um, next, I'm going to use my fillet command set to a zero inch radius to clean up these intersections. So I'm going to click on this segment then click on this segment. And I'm going to do that again down here. All right. So now we have uh, no extra segments inside of our boundary. Um, all right. So the next thing we're going to do is start offsetting to get our wall thickness. Okay. So for this wall here, this wall here, this wall here, and this wall here, we're going to be offsetting by five and a half inches. Um, and then these two are going to be the three and a half inches. Okay. So I'm going to type an offset. And then I'm going to uh, specify my distance here to be five and a half inches. So I'm going to type in 5.5 inches and hit enter. And then we're going to individually offset each of these line segments. So I'm going to start by clicking on this one, dragging to the right, and then clicking. And then going down here, clicking, dragging up, clicking again. Going here, dragging, clicking again and then down here clicking and clicking again. Okay, so now we have our correct offset for these walls. All right, next I'm gonna exit out of that command and then I'm gonna start the command again by hitting enter and I'm gonna change my distance now to three and a half inches. So I'm gonna type in 3.5 inches, hit enter. Then I'm gonna choose this wall right here and then drag to the left and click. Choose the one at the top drag down and click again and then click escape to exit the command. Uh, really qu quickly I'm going to delete this line segment that I uh, missed and I'm going to show you another way of cleaning up these um, intersections um, other than using fillet or extend. Um, what you can do which you probably saw in the LinkedIn learning videos is just select the line and then use these blue grips that come up and you just have to click on it once, drag it down and click again and that's going to extend it where you want. Now you can do the exact same thing when it comes to cleaning up all these line segments. So if I, um, if I use my pan tool right here, you can now see all of these intersections that we need to clean up. Um, but all you have to do is you can go around and do that same thing with the grip so for example like that, um, or you can do it on these open intersections like this by first dragging over and if you have your reference lines turned on, if you hover over this point and drag up, you're going to get that green lock on and you can uh, accurately move it like that. Okay, so you can do it that way. You can do it with the fillet tool, so fillet.
and then select your two lines. Or you could use trim. So you could highlight everything and type trim and then get rid of those extra little line segments that you don't want. All right, but this is what we're looking for at the end. Um, we just want a nice clean outline of our walls. All right. So once we have that, we want to get our little wing wall in here where the sinks go. Um, and we don't have, again, an accurate dimension for where that is placed um, away from this wall or this wall. So we're going to use a little bit of guessing here. Um, so actually first I'm going to use my measure tool and I'm going to click in this corner and then get really close and see what it says. Okay, so we can safely assume that is six feet away from this wall that's up here based on what I'm seeing next to my cursor. All right, so six feet, that looks good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, how I like to do it is um, copy down a line that I can use and then modify later. All right, so if I type in copy after selecting this line, we're gonna copy this line down six feet, okay? so six feet and hit, hit enter and we can see our copy is placed right where we need it to be and then this one I'm going to copy again three and a half inches to get my wall thickness all right so then what we need to do is copy one of these lines over three feet so that we get the exact point where this wall segment is going to be cut off. So if I click on this line and then type copy, I'm gonna copy that to the left three feet. And there we go. And now we're just gonna use our trim and we're gonna clean up all these intersections, okay? So I'm gonna highlight everything, type in trim, and then I'm going to get rid of this line segment, this line segment, this line segment, this one here, and then don't forget to clean up this little intersection right here. We want to get rid of that as well. Okay. All right, so the final thing we're going to do in this video is set up our opening for our door. Okay. So if you look at this drawing, what this is saying right here, this little three with the symbol, that's just saying that this is a three foot wide door opening, okay? So from here to here, that is gonna be three foot. Um, now again, we don't have the exact dimension for where this is placed on the wall, but typically, if you don't have a dimension, the edge of this is usually around four inches away from the wall, okay? So this line is usually about four inches from this line. That may or may not always be the case, but four inches is usually a safe bet because you have to have enough room in these corners to fit your door casing, and door casing is, um, you know, typically around four inches wide. Okay, but again, I'm going to use my measure tool to sort of get an accurate idea of where that is. So if I click and then uh, start dragging over, we can see this one is approximately see what do they got about we'll say two and a half inches we'll go with two and a half for this one so now that I have that I'm going to grab this line again and I'm going to copy that to the left 2.5 inches Okay, then I'm going to click on it and I'm going to use the grip and I'm going to drag that down here. And then I'm going to use trim. I'm going to establish this as my fence. So I'm going to click on that first. And then once I click on that, hit enter and then click on this to get rid of it. 
And now I want to copy this line over three feet to the left. So if I click on it and then type in copy, um, I'm going to move that three feet to the left. So three feet, enter. And now that falls pretty much right where we need it for our door opening. So the final thing we're going to do is uh, trim out this opening. So you can click on these two line segments and then type in trim, enter. And by clicking on the line segments before we run the trim command, that establishes those two lines as our fence lines, okay? So the only lines now that we can trim are anything that intersect with those. So either these or these or what we want are these. So I'm just going to click and um, make a window and drag over those two line segments and then click again and they go away. Okay. So the very last thing I'm going to do now is highlight everything and then I'm going to type in join to join all of those lines together. Alright, so if you did it correctly, you should see it say 21 objects converted to one polyline. Alright, after you have this, we just want to go ahead and we want to save our file. So always do a file and then save as when you first create a new drawing. Alright, so we're going to go to save as drawing. Then you're going to find a spot where you want to save it and then just save it as, you know, your name practical assignment one, something like that, okay? And then um, once you have it to this point, you're done for the week, just save it, and then next week we're gonna pick up and then do um, a few more of these things, all right?